Hello, hope everybody's doing fine, enjoying the last days of summer, getting lots of good photographs, so we have something to sit by the warm fires and process in the, in the dead of winter. Uh, today I'd like to talk about the select subject and masking refinement in Lightroom. Lightroom does a good job of selecting subjects that are on backgrounds that are, have a big contrast change or color change. When we have that, our masking or select subject feature works much, much better. Uh, to start out with, uh, we would go over to our right hand panel and choose our masking feature and we click sec select subject. When we select subject, it selects the subject that it thinks is the main focus of the photograph. Now here you can see it's done a pretty good job, but it also has selected some of the darker water and it has selected some areas within the bird's feet. So let me zoom in just a little bit so we can see better. Hold our space bar down and drag it to where we can see all of our areas that we want to mask. And now what we want to do is concentrate on refining the mask. We can see that we have some areas between the feet, some areas in the neck, and maybe some edges around the bird itself that need to be cleaned up. And to do that, we're going to use the brush. So we would select our mask. We would hit subtract because we want to take away from the mask. The mask being the bird, we want to take away these areas. We would select subtract and we would select brush. When we select brush, we get some options here on how to control the brush. And before we go into this masking feature, let's just go over some of the features of the brush so we better understand our tool. I'm going to hit reset and I'm just going to select the brush so we can see what's going on here. At the very top you have A and B and this allows you to pre-select two different types of brushes. So right now we have brush A which is a smaller size. You can see my brush here, it's, it's small, it's right here in this, this area. Uh, the feather is at 75%, and we'll talk about in a second. Flow is at 100, and density is 100. So if I draw on the picture, we can see that the area that is going to be masked is in fuchsia. We can also change this color and this, what we call an overlay, by selecting up here. If we click on this color here, we can select any cover overlay we want. We can also select, select how open. Uh, opaque we want it. So if we turn it up here, it's going to cover up more of the photograph. I usually don't like it at 100% because I like to see what's going on behind the areas that I'm masking. So I usually keep it at about 75%. But you can choose any color and opacity that you want. Show overlay means that it's going to show the overlay wherever I brush. All right. If it's off, no overlay shows. Now when we make a change, you'll see the mask overlay uh, briefly until you change the exposure or the uh, contrast or any of the highlights, anything like that. Once you make a change to the photograph, your overlay disappears unless you choose select overlay and then it will show all the time. So for now we're just going to leave the show overlay on. So now let's talk about what these brush tools do. I'm going to reset this. We're going to go to the brush. The first thing we're going to talk about is size. Now that's just very simple. It's just the size of the brush. All right. You can change the size by sliding it bigger or you can use your left bracket key and your right bracket key to make it bigger and smaller. So if I press my left bracket key, I'll make it smaller and press my right bracket key makes it bigger. Let's reset that. The next is feather and feather is that area between the inner circle and outer circle of the brush. So everything from the center to the inner circle, you get 100% of the effect. From the inner circle to the outer circle, it gradually decreases to zero. So when I have a feather set to 100%, you can see I have a very soft edge. When I have the feather set to zero, I have a very sharp edge. There'll be very, very seldom times that you use a brush with sharp edges. 
but just know that you have the feature available to you if you're doing really fine masking and you need precise edges that's what you want to use for the most of the time I stay at 75 to 100 percent of my feather so let's reset that and go back to our brush flow I'm going to change my feather to about 50 percent so I can show this better flow is a way to tell Lightroom how much of the effect you want to put on with each brush stroke so with it set at 100 percent I get 100% of the effect with each stroke. I can go over it as much as I want, but I'm already at 100%. So there's no reason for me to brush again and again. So flow means how much of the effect do I put down at each, each brush stroke. Let's change it now to 50%. Each time I stroke, I get 50% more color until I reach 100%, and then it's not gonna get any darker than it did up here, all right? So that just means how much of the effect do I put down on each stroke. So if you have it real low, it allows you to go over an area again and again till you get to the amount of effect that you want. So it's a way for you to apply the effect gradually till it's just the way you want it, and then you're done. Right? So it gives you more control that way. The final one is density. Density means how much of the effect do I want to apply no matter how many times I stroke the brush with flow. So if I set it 100%, I can keep go, going over and over with my brush stroke because our flow is set real low, but it will keep building up till it gets to 100%. Once it hits 100%, there'll be no way to apply more effect. So if I have my flow I mean my density set at 50%, that means that I can keep going back and forth with my flow, with my brush, and it will never reach higher than 50%. All right, so that it's kind of for protection. I don't want to overdo this effect, so by changing the density, I protect myself from not applying 100% of the effect, only 50% of the effect. So let me go over through this again. Size is just like it says, the size of your brush. Feather is how soft do I want my edges of the brush. Flow is how much of the effect do I want to put down on each brush stroke. And density is how much am I going to allow to be put down no matter how many brush strokes I take. Right? The final one is auto mask. And this is the most important of all the features of the brush. When we have auto mask turned on, let's change our flow and density to 100 percent and we'll get a smaller brush when we have auto mask turned on we're basically saying wherever my crosshair is wherever that plus mark is that is the only place that the effect is going to apply which means that if i have my crosshair on this white that is the only place it's going to apply the effect it looks at the exact color uh, luminance and the color range and applies the effect to all the areas in the circle that that color is found. So as you can see my brush goes outside the bird but the color or the masking does not because those areas are not like what's under the plus. Now you can also take away from a mask by changing it to a subtract and to do that you hold your alt or option key down you can see my cursor changes to a, a minus, and then when I select here, it takes away using the same feature, the auto mask feature. Right? So when I'm adding to my mask, I just click on the color, and it fills it in. If I want to take away, hold my Alt or Option key down, and take away. All right. Now that we have uh, an understanding of all those features. Let's reset our picture and let's start from the beginning. The first thing we want to do is select our subject. So we're going to click on our masking icon and we're going to click select subject. And you can see it's done a pretty good job, although it's grabbed some of the water in between the feet and around the neck. So what we want to do is subtract from our select subject to get rid of these areas uh, that were masked incorrectly. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is go up here, select, select subtract and brush. I want a relatively small brush. I want um, a pretty big feather and uh, I want my flow and density at 100% because I don't want to have to keep brushing over an area to uh, take the masking away. I'm going to use my command our, let's see we're going to use make command plus to make our photograph zoom in a little bit and we're going to start concentrating on the areas in our bird right in the neck here. So I'm going to make my brush a little bigger by using the bracket key and I'm going to keep my minus on the water and I'm just going to have the inner circle lightly brush around the area of the bird's neck. You can see because I have the auto mask turned on it's not going into the white. We still don't want to be crazy you know we want to give ourselves all the room we can. The auto mask does a good job but let's not tempt it to fade so that's why I use the the hard edge of my brush on the bird and I let the feathered edge go in and make a fine adjustment. So you want the hard edge of your brush to be a, uh, just barely touching the bird itself and make sure your center cursor is over the area or color that you're trying to clear up. So now let's go right here. We'll make sure we're on the water and we'll click. See, it got that really good. And now we'll just very finely refrain or I, I remove the the mask. Now when you get into these dark areas because they're about the same color as the bird's leg you have to be very careful that you keep your edge off the bird's foot itself. We're just going to go around the edges like this. making sure our cursor is on the area or the color that we want to remove. So for the most part it looks like we have pretty good uh, masking of the bird. We can do some refinement around the edges just barely touching the edges just keep clicking like this. Keep it on the water We'll hold our space bar down and we can move our photograph. Let's click right here. Just a little bit of the mask is on the water. It's hard to see. Now when we get to the areas that are around the bird's feet, be sure you don't get, because the water here is near the same color as the bird's feet, just keep your hard edge of your brush right on the edge of the bird like this because we don't want to take away any of the masking on the bird. Make our brush a little smaller. Get in a little closer there. Come up here. Down this edge. Now when we get to the areas that we don't care about the auto masking, let's turn the auto masking off and it will clean up everything real fast. Just like this. Move over this way, make our brush a little bigger. See with the auto masking off it doesn't care about the color, it just erases. Just want to make sure we get all this off so when we finish with our select subject that we're good to go. Alright, well, it's not perfect but it's pretty good. And another way to tell is uh, you can change exposure, zoom it, uh, move it in and out. You can see we have a pretty good select subject here. If you don't like uh, some of the edges, just make a smaller brush and refine, or refine around the bird, making sure that your hard edge barely touches the edge of the bird and that your minus is on the area and color that you want to remove. And you just go around the edges removing that. 
All right, now that we have our bird defined, we also want to define our background. And to do that, we're going to go up to our mask right here above the bird, click here, duplicate and invert mask. So now we have a mask of the background. So let's zoom out a little bit and let's change our exposure on our background. We can even uh, put a little dehaze in there. Change the clarity and texture. Not too much, we're getting a glow around the bird. But as you can see, we now have two good masks to finish up our picture. We have our mask of the bird. If we hover over it, you'll see the purple of the bird. And we have our foreground background. So with just a few clicks of using our select subject and then do some real quick refinement using our brush, we're able to mask our foreground and our subject matter with very little problems. I hope this helps you out when you're refining your mask. If you have any problems or any questions on the technique, be sure and shoot me an email and I'll be glad to help you out anytime I can. Thanks.